Ready. All right, we are here, and let's see, we're doing a Thanksgiving episode on YouTube. Let's see if we can make it go yellow by speaking about traditional American stuff. We probably go yellow just for talking about traditional American stuff. Uh, that's why I was just saying, I just yeah. realized, it's like, oh, wait a minute, if it's something that's not Howard Zinn, yeah, we probably will be yellow, which is- I'm just going to say indigenous people, just right off the bat. <laughs> indigenous <laughs> podcast, indigenous right. show indigenous fun for all the word indigenous it's just a fun word it's a treat um today we're going to be talking about mark uh, told me the story a few times in the background and it's a fun little tale for thanksgiving we figured hey why not tie it into the holiday have a short show and get a chance to talk to 32 40 of you out there and maybe some others will enjoy this as well Somebody saying John Alden was the 13th great grandfather. Wow. 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 He's All still right. alive, huh? <laughs> wow. That's really promising. Yes. I apologize. Um, it appears somebody has got their car tricked out with speakers, and I hope the light changes down the road because it's actually shaking the entire neighborhood right wow. now. Wow. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't hear anything. I don't hear anything. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. So. For today's show, we're going to talk about what kind of cargo was on the Mayflower, what happened when they got here, and how this is essentially an establishment point of a lot of American culture. So take it away, Mark. What were they carrying on that ship? What was in that? Well, Mayflower? if you look at the ship's log, I mean, uh, they got the usual stuff. You, you, yeah, I guess this is the ship there. You got 102 passengers and uh, 30 crew, and they take 66 days to cross over to the New World. Normally, it took like 40, but they encounter incredible storms and everything else, and it, it became a very hairy thing as history is recorded. It also uh, was uh, a cargo ship too. It was right. normally carrying passengers, and they put them. I think, I think it was on the gun deck, right? They well, were, they were crammed in They're, there. Yeah, they were everywhere. But on board the ship, to answer your question, they had fourteen tons of water. Now, the water I need to explain is is for bathing um, and not for drinking. And I, I just want to give you the backstory on water to make this story make some sense. Nobody drank water in Europe. All the water was polluted. And this is a very difficult concept to wrap your mind around. There was no soda. There was no juice. There was no milk. There was nothing. The only thing people drank was beer and wine. It's hard to imagine what I'm talking about, but they never drank water because water killed people. Water gave you malaria. Water gave you diphtheria. Water, you know, was a carrier of disease. Every single river and tributary in Europe by that time, after the Industrial Revolution and before it, was polluted. Yeah, they found because, it. Right. So because of that, the whole culture drank nothing but alcohol. And this is usually less than 6% beer and wine and aqua vitae, which was a, a light brandy. So the ship itself is loaded down with 42 tons of beer and 10,000 gallons of wine. Now, because it took 66 days. How, how much beer? Hold on. The beer was 42 tons of beer. Wow. And 14 tons of water, 10,000 gallons of wine. And that was to be divided up among 100 passengers, 102, let's say. I don't know what that amounts to per person. But the reality of it is because of the extra time crossing the Atlantic, by the time they get to Plymouth Rock, this has been um, drank. <laughs> this is gone. And they begin to panic. And the sailors who are on board the ship, the ship stays right there in the harbor. And because of the harsh winter in January and February, they are 
living essentially on board the ship and they're below deck because it's so cold and they're begging the sailors every single day to give them some of their stash of beer and wine and a little bit of gin that they had and the sailors basically refused because they need it for a 50-day journey going back the other way so what happens is they start to get the dts they start to get sick and the captain of the ship says we're only going to give a can of beer to those who are really sick in other words it's kind of what you do today with an intervention the person who to avoid the dts you give them little sips of beer and mm -hmm. that's what they were doing in 1620 was giving these passengers little sips of beer because they were going through withdrawals from having no alcohol. There was nothing they could do. And they're on board the ship. Finally, the captain says, I got to get out of here. I got to go back to Europe and you got to get off the ship. So everybody abandons ship and they go on to the land, you know, where they're basically liquorless. And that's where they start to quickly making these stills and trying to quickly put together because the, the, keep in mind the beer itself has to be made with hops and grain and they don't mm -hmm. have that in the new world that comes from europe you don't even have that so they start trying other weird items like beer made out of corn beer made out of uh, molasses beer made out of whatever the hell they've got going but it's a desperate attempt to save themselves from going into the dts and having convulsions and you could die you know, from alcohol withdrawal. Now, they don't realize that the water that's there in Plymouth is clean. Right. To them, drink the concept of drinking water is so foreign that the captain of the ship starts yelling at them to drink the freaking water. And they don't want to do it because they know, you know, all through history that kills people. Right. So they either don't know. Either it's bad rivers or it's seawater, both of which are right, right, not either drinkable. One, right. So they don't know if this water is polluted or not. Everywhere that they've ever come from, no, imagine never drinking water if you can get your mind around that idea. So this goes back to a, a little bit earlier, where if I could take you back a step as to how we got there, sure. in 1500, there was a German alchemist named Brunschweig, uh, Hieronymus Brunschweig. And he translates the ancient Egyptian text on how to distill perfume. And by the distillation process of perfume, that creates what we know as distilled alcohol. That did not exist in Europe in the 1500s. By 1515, the Dutch had taken juniper berries, put them into a distilled machine, and out of the other side, out of the distillery machine, comes what we know as Geneva, as the, gin, as the uh, Dutch called it. For juniper berries and that became gin and because they had gin they put a tax on it the dutch and they raised the largest army in in europe and they were able to go to the new world with that money do all kinds of stuff with their navy because they had money from gin so the other nations of the world caught on to this and began to make their own versions of distilled liquor now, keep in mind, the distilled liquor that is gin is the crack cocaine of Europe. Mm -hmm. It is 50 proof rocket fuel compared to their two to three percent wine and beers they've been drinking for centuries, Eric. And the enormous difference leads to massive, massive alcoholism throughout Europe and especially in London, where there's a still every 10 feet cranking out gin. And this has an incredible effect on Europe. Um, the this is Irish... similar to what we're seeing over the past century with Native American tribes, right? Right, but because it's also the same as what we saw in the 80s for crack cocaine because people did powdered cocaine in the 60s and 70s without any problem. When crack mm -hmm. cocaine, which I call gin back in that era, comes mm -hmm. out in the 80s, you see addiction and violence go crazy. And cocaine had been around for a century, Eric. Just like the, mm -hmm. the these these liquors, uh, these these wines and and beers. Yeah, Freud so, did coke, didn't he? Everybody, Sherlock did. Holmes. I, everybody yeah. did. I mean, I the Irish made whiskey, the Scottish made scotch, the Germans made schnapps, uh, the Russians started to make something called vodka out of their potatoes, the Serbs made slivovitz, uh, which is a plum brandy. What, whatever your cheapest piece of crap grain is of your nation, the cheapest, <laughs> that's what you made this distilled liquor with. 
So every yes. nationality came when the Americans came here, when we finally got our shit together, we started to make corn liquor because we mm -hmm. had tons of freaking corn to throw into the hopper. And out came, you know, corn liquor, our whiskey. Uh, we also made rum because of the sugar coming up out of Barbados from the slave trade. But to get back to the the pilgrims, they had been drinking hard liquor and 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 these wines and beers since they were children, since they were children. And now they had nothing and they start to go into the DTs. They start to freak out. They start to have convulsions and they begin to quickly assemble these ad hoc stills, which they call Lembex. Uh, it basically a moonshine operation in the mountains. But this is what mm -hmm. they had to put up with. And they had to do this to save their own lives. By 1633, um, 10, 12 years later, there were three licensed taverns in all of uh, uh, Plymouth and that colony. But they had a tavern that you could actually go to. And they needed to set that up first so you could have a place to, to get, you know, get your stuff from. And they started to um, have the first commercial distillery in 1657 that was the first business they made was a commercial distillery and and they needed that they really did and you know as people have pointed out the people who came here were not the best and the brightest they were alcoholics they were thrill seekers they were uh, claim jumpers bail jumpers criminals uh, maniacs everybody put it this way yeah well that's my territory down here Right. right. Jamestown. Jamestown. <laughs> I mean, if, yeah. if you didn't drink, if you were a person who didn't drink, just were a normal person, they had a name for you called crank brained. They thought you were insane. If you didn't drink at all, you were called crank brained. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. But the point of the matter is because you couldn't get supplies from England fast enough, it would take you months to get bottles of booze. You know, right. and, and beer would go bad and you literally had to fend for yourself as soon as you got there. And that's what they began doing was making these these miniature stills and cranking out uh, homemade beer. Every housewife had their own recipe of how to make homemade beer. Every single person had to make their own beer until the tavern system started and the licensing of the taverns and eventually the actual distillery in 1657 the first distillery in america basically now but, with these stills i'm i'm very curious because um i would imagine without any kind of quality control or knowledge that they may have been literally making almost pure grain alcohol potentially i mean there there wouldn't be any limit to the proofing on it right it, the, 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 yeah, the still harsh. itself, but the homemade beers were like six percent thick right, beer, beer, but yeah. they didn't have they didn't have the real stuff from England to make it. So, in other words, George Washington was making a, a molasses beer. Ben Franklin made a spruce beer. They were trying all kinds of crazy crap. It's crazy to try. I, I almost I know. I know. Just to see what it's like. I know. Uh, Thomas Jefferson. Whatever your region was. Keep, okay, so dig this. Um, yeah, somebody pointed out mead. Mead might be closer to a molasses beer, I'm guessing. Right, right. Okay, so there's no apple trees in New England. They come over Johnny Appleseed. They plant apple trees. Mm. That becomes the basis of the northern states making apple cider, which cider. is their yeah. moonshine. Uh, rocket fuel cider out of apples. In the south, they have peaches. So in Georgia, in that region, peach they make ranch. a peach cider. Whatever you've got in your region, that's what you're going to use. You know, so when the Indians came and brought corn, and they started to huh, throw that in there. Let's see if this works. Let's <laughs> throw the corn in there. And, you know, that becomes corn liquor, and 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 nobody will work unless there's corn liquor. Washington's army will not march unless they have whiskey. No one will do anything. They would go without pay. They would go without pay as long as you had liquor in barrels to, to uh, provide them with. If you remember the story of Lewis and Clark, they brought hundreds of gallons of barrels of liquor with them, and they gave it out every day in these ladles to the men. You got like a giant ladle full or three per day to be rationed. And one guy goes nuts in the middle of the night, breaks in to the uh, uh, storage facility with the uh, whiskey, drinks all night, and he is arrested and charged with, he's court-martialed, and he's kept as a prisoner in chains throughout the entire trip 
of, uh, uh, of the Lewis and Clark expedition and coming back because he violated the sacred edict. He went crazy and drank the liquor. And wow. He, he, he was immediately put in chains and that he, that was it. That was it. Well, it kind of makes sense in a way. If, if you're drunk enough, you don't really care. Well, it's not only that. It's not that. It's it's it's. This is like drinking all your water in the desert. Oh it's, no, I know, I get that, but yeah. I meant people who would go without pay, as you pointed out. It's like I I can see that. I mean, it's like you don't just don't really care. Like, well, they okay. also thought that liquor helped your health, and right. and it was good for you, and water was not. So, in other words, but the, in the back end of it was if you didn't have liquor for a couple of days, you began to get sick. Because you began to have withdrawal. They didn't know what withdrawal was. They just started withdrawing and having the shakes. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew this. So you had to keep a supply of whiskey around all the time. And we became literally a drunken debauch nation. The Europeans would come over and they'd go, these people are insane. They'd go to the dinners and these drinking orgies would go on for hours and hours and hours of everyone toasting everyone and drinking and the French would come over and the British and everyone going, this is the most debauched culture I've ever seen in my life. And it was madness. The amount we were drinking, you know, of, of alcohol, it, 10 times more than we drink today. You know, eventually people started dying. There was a guy named Thomas Lucas uh, in the Plymouth Colony. And in 1678, he's found frozen and dead on the side of the road. <laughs> and Thomas Lucas is the first recorded death in Plymouth Colony from being frozen as an alcoholic on the side of the road. But Thomas Lucas goes back 50 years or 40 years of nonstop being arrested for drunkenness in mm. the Plymouth Colony. And he, there's all kinds of records of him being put in the stocks. You know, you got to stick with your hands and your head through the stocks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he gets arrested for doing stuff with his wife in the bushes, drunk. There's a whole litany of things. Good that, Lord. Yeah, the whole <laughs> litany of things that Lucas did uh, to put him on the map. The original the, rock star. He was the original <laughs> rock star who ends up on the side of the road, you know. But, the, you know, that's that's where the first laws come again, uh, uh, against public drunkenness is because of Thomas Lucas in, in 1678, that you couldn't be drunk, you couldn't be in church drunk, you couldn't be publicly drunk. And in fact, it was illegal to get someone drunk in your own house who was visiting you. Now you were responsible for him, kind of like bartenders getting people drunk today mm -hmm. and then going out and killing someone with their car. This was in, in the 1850, uh, 1650s, they had this law against getting someone visiting you drunk. You were responsible. Wow, crazy. Now, another story you've talked about, and it ties right into American history, is how tea oh, right. was the savior Right. Of that in England, and I imagine that that also Eventually, came over okay. here. The, the thing that stops the gin epidemic, they have gin riots in the 1700s because the British try to slow down the abuse of gin. Did they have cars that could go on the Mayflower? Car go, go. on the Mayflower. I see what you're saying. That's really interesting. Don't quit your day job. <laughs> so, anyway, so back in England, the women begin to boil a substance and put tea in it and no one has ever had tea before no one has ever <laughs> boiled water before there's no reason to boil water there's no reason to do anything with water uh, so when they begin to boil it and make tea they have tea parties in london and the they convince their men to drink the tea uh, with the boiled water and this becomes the first alternative substance that you could drink that's not alcohol this is before coffee arrives. Keep in mind, right. coffee's right. not come from the West Indies yet. So they begin to drink tea, and tea stops the epidemic of gin addiction in Europe. And tea eventually comes over here. We're more of a coffee culture, so we begin to ship coffee out of the West Indies up here. The same thing happens here. It stops the cycle of nonstop alcohol abuse by all the American colonialists. Which is showing the uh, uh, even more of the importance of the Boston Tea Party and the taxes that they put on the tea and things like that. It was a very important part of the culture. It wasn't just a right. Right well, now, we, to us, we're like, oh, it's Earl Grey tea, whatever. You just go get some. This is, as you're pointing out, a very right. important substance. Yeah. Well, it's, again, have. they had these riots. They had these riots in England, in London, uh, twice. The gin riots Thank you, Gavin. and uh, hey, Gavin, the gin riots. 
as Gavin as well. Or maybe he's not aware. I don't know. I was, I'd be curious to know if he knows about the uh, the gin tax and the riots that uh, followed from the gin tax. They, they did it twice, uh, the British. They try, they did it again and try not to raise money, but to really to reduce the consumption of gin uh, more than raising money. But the tea is what stops it. The tea is the key to this thing because they now can take water and by boiling the water, it's now drinkable, even though the tea is in it. The same thing happens with the coffee. Uh, but look, the addictive gene from there continues generation after generation of people who are alcoholics who pass it along to their kids and the kids are drinking and the damage is done. The wheel was turning right away, you know, from 200 years of, of nonstop uh, rocket fuel drinking of gin. In sure, fact, yeah. now gin, when gin comes to the United States, it's looked down upon as a poverty drink. Because the, the poverty, uh, the most impoverished in London drank gin. And here it's frowned upon. In gin mills. Yeah. And, yeah, it's all frowned upon here. There's no market for gin in the United States. Up until the martini, centuries later, revives gin from the martini. But that's a long time off. Dumb, dumb, this might be a completely dumb question, but I can't help but wonder. Does the term teetotaler come from the fact that somebody may be drinking tea totally? As in nothing. Good else. question, Eric, but completely wrong. The okay. Teetotaler. No, a lot of people believe that. That's not an unusual question. Uh, T is T E E, and it's on. I a knew it spelled differently. T E E, and it's a ballot initiative where you had to put a T for prohibition. Okay. Okay. It has nothing to do with T E A T. It's no. a, it, yeah. It's from the pro. It's from the pro. Trying to get uh, the original prohibition laws into place, which took a hundred years by itself. You know, I mean, prohibition. The, the attempt to get prohibition uh, starts in the 1860s, the 1850s. It takes till 1920. It, it takes like 70 years to get, you know, prohibition going in the United States. But the damage was so enormous. There were uh, inebrium asylums all through the country. Hundreds of people were put into these inebrium asylums in New York and Boston and Philadelphia. Hundreds and hundreds of people in there. Huge, huge buildings, huge buildings, all from yeah. alcohol damage, you know. Well, you're a drug counselor, and can you confirm that alcohol is possibly the worst drug? I don't know about the worst drug, but it's highly the most addictive, most available. I mean, the stuff I'm telling you about the Mayflower is is in my book, Rehab Nation, uh, right. where I cover the history of, of um, alcohol in America in the early chapters and, and the early beginnings of rehabs uh, in the 1800s in New York. Yeah, I was going to definitely bring that up at the end that everything we're talking about here yeah is it's in my in book, book. This is, yeah that's why i know this so well i mean because uh, you know i literally wrote the book on it but uh, <laughs> you can get it on amazon it's uh not very expensive okay uh, this is a good question um i don't think mark is saying that tea would stop the dts no, i think you're saying no. it's an alternative drink and over time people yes. can wean off of a beer or just can, mix tea in and not be drunk all the time well it allows you to use water it allows you to drink water, but it has to be boiled. But there was no reason to boil water right. until you made tea. Tea saved everybody from, from alcoholism, or not saved everyone, but it was the first alternative legit drink that you could have that was non-alcoholic in civilized society. Did they ever figure out here, I mean, early on that the water could be? Yes, but consumed? you understand, culturally, it was so ingrained, Eric, Still, okay. I yes, didn't know if he not eventually drink. it got through. Right, right, right. But it was so ingrained that the captain had to keep screaming at them to drink the freaking water. They was they were going to die from not drinking anything, you know, from uh, not having any fluids. I mean, it's kind of crazy. Hydrate? I mean, keep in mind, there's no juice, there's no milk, there's no right. soda. You know, there's nothing, Eric. There's nothing to drink. There's no water in their minds. All you have is alcohol, and now you've run out of alcohol. When that ship goes back, the Mayflower turns around to go home. They're fucked. I mean, that there is no way around it. What you know, they were freaking out. That's why they stayed on the ship, begging, mm. begging every hour. The sailors who finally took a, the captain decided that only the the sickest person is going to get a sip of their beer. Oh, you know, man. yeah, yeah. It sounds like they were actually pretty responsible. They were. They really were. I was surprised, you know, that they went that far. But they knew these people. They were on board the ship with them. They all came. Um, originally, the the 102 passengers, I think, came from the Netherlands. But they, when they left London, uh, wherever they departed from, 
they all knew each other and then they bonded with the sailors. And I mean, keep in mind, the crew is pretty small. This mm -hmm. is not a big crew. I mean, you've got a, a crew of 30, Eric, going across in a 66 day voyage, you know, that was really rough, really, mm -hmm. really rough. And I think that's where a lot of the alcohol got consumed, you know. But, you know, I'm even sure. the beer, I mean, if you think about beer, it can't be stored in kegs forever. It goes flat and it goes crazy. You know, and the, mm. the same thing with water. I mean, water's not going to take, you know, uh, uh, stay clean and 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 in a barrel, right? You know, sure. I mean, you, you could drink rainwater, I guess. That you know, that's kind of pure. Yeah, good point. Good point. And by the way, for folks that don't realize that we still do use um, have non-drinkable water. Yeah, out there. When I was in the army, we had, you know big tanks of it it was non-potable water right and say on the side non-potable water right and you use it for showering and that's what this whatever. was for that's what i think so. this was for on board the ship you know just to and have scrubbing food. the decks and yep. you know whatever yep. you know yep. all, all kinds of uses yeah so. well i have a, i have a feeling that these dts and this is a theory i talked to dr drew about this just the other day as a matter of fact um, that these dts led to them having hallucinations which is what uh, delirium tremens does and I believe they began to see goblins and witches and all kinds of different kinds of hallucinatory things, which may have indirectly led to the Salem witch trials, Eric. Could be. Could be. So on that happy note, bringing a little Halloween into uh, Thanksgiving holiday. Right. What do we have coming next? Oh, my. That's a good question. I don't know. It depends on the order of things. Um I don't know. Let's uh, throw some things out there. Maybe people in the comments will say what they want to hear. Right. I mean, there's Lenny Bruce. There's Ruth Payne. There's the Abby Hoffman. There's a uh, Lord Ray, Buckley. Um, Lord Buckley. There's the um, Salt versus Sabin, the race for the cure for polio. We're doing Salt versus Sabin for sure, I believe, in December. And right. We okay. may have a guest with us on that one. There's the art cop thing with the woman, uh, Stephanie Lazarus. Um that we teased on the show that my special involvement yep. in that case, um, there's the plot to overthrow, overthrow, uh, FDR. Um, Oh, and America's street games. We're going to do Christmas. On Christmas Day. Day. Yeah. That's a yeah. family episode of, of the history of America's street games. Johnny on the pony, red light, green light, um, red Rover, ring Alivio, box ball, Scully. There's dozens of them. Um, all right. What else do we have? There's quite a bit. Yeah, you know what? Maybe uh, maybe we'll narrow some things out and start doing a little bit of polling on polling, locals. Polling. So well, they, then, like, you don't want to give it away, though. There's a lot of these people, like, they, you know, if I say the Strange Loves, right, the right, band, nobody knows who the Strange Loves are as a rock band. So just, Mel Lyman. We're going to Right, nobody knows. Mel Lyman. How, can you, how can you poll that? I mean, that's true. You that's may true. not know, you know, I'd like to do the history of, the, you know, how we created MTV Magazine, which is kind of, a you know, interesting. And we got the LBJ trilogy. Oh, that's coming and, up. That's going to be next year. We got the, I, we got no the Oswald trilogy coming up, right? Yep. Also right. next year. Clay Shaw. We want to do an episode on Clay Shaw. And Jack Ruby. Yeah. Ruby, I said. Clay Shaw, Ruth Sorry. Payne. Ruth Payne. Um, okay. Well, yeah, we've I mean, been throwing so a, a lot out there. It's and a question as of order, that's all. Right. And as everybody can hear, we're, we have abundant material coming up. <laughs> 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 Bottomless <laughs> pit. Bottomless pit. For sure. Yeah. And Don't forget. The world's largest toga party, Eric. Oh, yes. But we're yeah. we already doing that. That's the Mardi Gras episode. Oh, all right. Mardi Gras. Right. right. So don't worry. Don't worry. We've got a lot of cool things coming, folks. And think about it. Mardi Gras, we normally do Tuesdays, right? So we got to do a little Fat Tuesday action with the toga party. For now, though, please comment below. Something is striking you as sounding better than others you want to mm -hmm. hear. Consider following us on Locals. Instructure.locals.com. All right. I'm at Lord Buckley on Twitter. Mm -hmm. you can buy the Rehab Nation book down below. I think it's three bucks. I'll give it to you if you don't have the three bucks. And there's some PayPal links down there for the book fund if you want to for donate sure. to the book fund. And uh, yeah, the, the locals thing is great. I mean, I'm already posting a lot of stuff on locals. We're going to put some scripts up there and some printed material, mm -hmm. Eric. Is that right? Yeah, printed material, scripts. Did we put the uh, Rust script up yet or no? Yeah, it's already up there. Oh, okay. And I don't great. know. Maybe yeah. there's a PDF floating around about of, of your book. I don't know. Maybe that can go up there. Oh, maybe we could put that up. Uh -huh. Yeah, who knows? So love to um, hear what everybody thinks. 
please consider following. So by the way, you can follow locals for free and just right. look around. We'll right. have some exclusive content for the paywall, but right. there's still a lot of people who are providing material and it's free to follow and at least look, you know, you don't have to just go and immediately drop money into it. Right. I definitely appreciate it. Question and answer episode. Yes, we will do one. I think I promised early on we were doing at 10,000 subscribers. Oh, where are we now? We're getting close. We're getting yeah, close. we're at, se I think, 7,500 and change. Okay, so, so we need 2,500 of you today to uh, subscribe. Well, we'd like to get it before the end of the year. That would be a nice way oh, to yeah. close out the end of the year. You know, New a Year's little, Eve, New Year's uh, Eve episode. Yeah, question and answer, getting that um, subscribe. And yeah, Gavin's right. Please hit the like button. That way it can get discovered. But until now, folks. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. And seriously, have an amazing holiday. We've got so few left. Family. <laughs> and and even with the, just, just enjoy the holiday. I mean, we have so many crazy things happening in the world. Enjoy the right. moment and right. the holiday. Right. And please, please, please have fun. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.